One of the most common swing faults that we see with golfers is something known as loss of posture. And it's so common because it's easy to lose posture. And when we're talking about it, we're simply meaning, okay, you come out of posture, whether that's early extending, standing up, flat shoulders, sway and slide, anything where the body is moving around more than it should is what we call loss of posture. Now there's certain kinds of posture loss that are gonna get its own video. So for this one, when we're talking about loss of posture, in this particular example, what we're talking about is standing up. Because right, again, there are other forms such as early extension, which will get its own video, flat shoulders, which will get its own video, you know, things like that. But what we're talking about is really standing up. If you top the ball, if you chunk the ball, if you're inconsistent, if you shank it, there's a good chance that this is happening in some form or another. That when you swing, you're coming out, standing up, and so forth. And so it's really important for us to understand, okay, why does this happen? And it's twofold. And again, because of its general nature, they're somewhat vague, but what we're talking about are the hips and the shoulders. Now the reason why I say that this is a little bit vague is because a lot of times with loss of posture, it's not just mobility, it's also the strength and stability piece. And that's true here in both cases, on the hips and the shoulders, is we need to get them active, we need to improve the mobility, and then we need to get them stronger and more stable. So this is a really fun one. Even if uh, you don't present loss of posture in your swing, these are still a great protocol of exercises to go through to improve core stability and peripheral mobility. Okay, so when we're talking about the hips, first things first, glute activation. This should be no surprise to you at this point that any time we're working on the hips, we need to get our butt to fire up. At the same time, when we're working on the shoulders, we need our shoulders to fire up, and that's going to be through a pass-through. Now, mind you that when we're going through these protocols, the specifics of how can change. It's the principles behind them that are important because this is not going to be the only video we make on loss of posture, but the intention of this video is to give you the idea of what it is, why it happens, and then just one of many ways of how we can fix it. So you may see different variations of the specific protocol, but at least now you know why it happens. All right, back to the hips. Glutes are active. What do we do from here? That's right, we improve the mobility, and we're going to do some Samson lunges, okay? Now the cool thing about a Samson lunge is it's both a mobility and a stability exercise at the same time. The way that we're going to do it not only improves the mobility of your hips, but it improves the strength and stability of your legs as well as your balance. And when you tie all of those components together, you get a really effective stretch in a very short amount of time. And then lastly, we're gonna do some single leg toe touches. Now this one, depending on where you're at, might be an advanced movement to stand on one leg and bend down. We'll talk about how to scale that to make it a little bit easier if that is too complicated for you. No problem at all. Everything is always scalable so that everybody can do it. Now we head over to the shoulders. We've already warmed them up with our pass through. So what's next? That's right. We're going to improve range of motion with some IE presses, one of my favorite moves super simple. You can do it at home. You can do it at the office. You can do it on the course. It takes no time, no space, and it's really effective. And then after we've gone through all this, there's one more that we need to do to help really improve the range of motion while creating strength that we can really use functionally in our swing, and that's through diver's presses. And you see the diver's presses as part of the power warm-up, and so it's really important that it gets its own moment to really shine in these, these swing fall protocols because it does a great job of not just improving range of motion in one plane, but multiple planes because we're getting the shoulder to rotate while we strengthen it. Super, super important. So when it all comes together, we're looking at the hips and the shoulders, improving the range of motion and the stability. And by doing that, you're going to stay in posture more often and it's probably going to help you avoid topping the ball or coming out of posture, shanking, and anything else that comes along with it. One of the most important things any golfer can learn how to do is learn how to activate your glutes. 
These are super powerful muscles and they're responsible for generating big swings and for protecting your lower back. But we need to get them turned on. So we're going to lay down on the floor, on our back, and you're going to put your hands under your butt cheeks. You can go palms up, palms down, either is fine. And we're just going to spend some time getting our butt to squeeze and our hands underneath there so that we can feel that sensation and get some feedback. If you want to close your eyes, that can help. But what we're going to do is squeeze both your butt cheeks as hard as you can. Three, two, and one. And then turn them off. And then squeeze just your right cheek as hard as you can. Three, two, one. And turn it off. Then your left cheek. Three, two, one. Turn it off. Now we're going to turn them both back on. And we're going to see if we can turn just the right one off. Either you can or you can't. Turn it back on and try to turn your left one off and then back on. And this would be one cycle and you can go through this as many times as you need to until your butt is contracting nice and strong. One of the best ways to unlock power is to unlock your hips. And one of the best ways to unlock your hips is to do a Samson lunge hold. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna get into a split stance. I'm gonna start with my right foot forward. There is some space between my feet. They don't have to be in line with each other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take my hips and square them up so that my belt buckle is pointed to where I want it to go. And I'm going to try to get my feet pointed at 12 o'clock. Again, they don't need to be in line with each other, but I want them both pointed toward 12 o'clock. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to lower our chest a little bit, and we're going to try to tuck our tailbone, okay? And we're going to try to get it to, to lock in place by squeezing your butt. Once that's locked in, then we're going to start to open our chest and try to push this hip forward and the goal of this stretch is to push this hip forward. Now this alone is a great position to hang out in. We're feeling some tension in the front of your left hip, but it's contracted feeling strong and if you're feeling really good you can go up onto your toes, get your heels off the ground and then really try to push your toes away from each other and really focus on opening this spot of the hip up, squeezing your butt and staying tall with your posture. Hang out here for one, two, three minutes, and then switch it up and do the other side. One of the absolute best ways to build strength and control of the lower body as well as coordination and balance is the single leg toe touch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our foot flat on the ground and bring your other leg up flat to the ground. Now we're gonna bend at the waist as low as we can. Now for some of you, this might be enough. Just trying to do this motion might be plenty. But then we work our way down. Can we get to our knee and come all the way back up? Can we get to our shin and come all the way back up? Can you get down to the toes or to the floor and again come back up under control? Spend as much time as you need to working on getting a little bit farther each time before switching sides to balance it out. One of my favorite ways to improve my shoulder mobility or warm them up before a round is doing something called a pass-through. And you can do a pass-through in many different ways using either a golf club or something like a power band. But what it is so simple about it is that we all have a driver. Now let me show you how we do a pass-through and then I'll show you a variation of the pass-through called an egg beater in case you can't do the pass-through. Well, what a pass-through is, is we're gonna put both hands on the outside of the club as wide as we can go. And then keeping our arms straight, we're gonna go all the way forward and backward till the club shaft touches our front side and our back side and we just keep going as many times as we need to to feel warm and over time we're going to scoot our hands a little bit closer together. So a little bit closer, a little bit closer and eventually you're going to get to a point where you can't go any closer and that's perfectly fine. But some of you may find that you can't even do it as wide as possible and that's where an egg beater comes in. An egg beater is simply working one side at a time. So I'm going to keep, for example, my right arm straight as I go forward and backward. And you'll notice my left arm is bent, and it's just providing some, some slack and control of the club. If I want to make it harder, I can pull more with my left arm. If I want to make it easier, then my left arm comes more toward my body. And then I can switch sides. Now my left arm is straight, my right arm is bent. And as my shoulders start to warm up, I can go one into another and backwards. And then finally into the pass-through that we started with. Okay. The key is to not ever force it, 
but just spend enough time getting your shoulders warm until they can do what you're trying to get them to do. The other way that I like doing this is through something with like a power band. And the power band is great because you can do the exact same thing that we were just talking about, except now you're always providing a little tension. You're always pulling the band a little bit apart. And this is really great for getting your shoulders to open because it's a little bit more active. And while you can do the same thing with your club by pulling it apart a little bit, nothing's going to be quite as good as the power band. But pass-throughs are by far one of my favorite ways to get the shoulders warm before you play, before you work out, and to improve your range of motion. One of my favorite shoulder mobilizations is also the simplest. What we're going to do is take our arm, stick it behind our back as far up as we can. Don't force it with your palm away from you. Once it's there, keeping your core braced, you're going to press your entire arm through your body and start to feel your shoulder kind of tingle. We inhale, three, two, one. As you exhale, relax, and we switch so that now your arm is up top, palm is now against your body, get your hand as low as you can go without forcing it, and then again, we're going to push through our body. We're going to breathe in. Three, two, one. Exhale and relax. And then repeat back and forth as many times as you need to until you can feel that change in your shoulder. And then go ahead and work the other side. One of the keys to having a great golf swing is having great shoulders. And diver's presses are a great exercise to help you get there. What we're going to do is stick both our hands out in front of us. Cross your left arm over top and then put your hands together by twisting them. Now we're gonna go overhead, and it's okay if your elbows bend a little bit. If you can keep them straight, great. Not a big deal if they bend just a little. And you're gonna stay nice and tall, and you're gonna press your hands together. You're gonna try to press your hands together and press your elbows and your shoulders apart. You're gonna feel some tension through your shoulders. This is great. You're gonna breathe. And exhale. And as you do that, you're gonna slowly twist your hands back and forth, back and forth a couple of times while breathing, and then eventually you're going to sweep down and back. Now that's one and we need to balance it out because that time you put your left arm on top, we need to do it again, but this time with your right arm on top. Same idea, hands together, we go above head and we repeat. But just remember, every time you do your left, you need to do your right just to make sure that you stay nice and balanced. If you found any of this information helpful, please go to tourshotgolf.com to check out and learn more. And then check me out on the social medias at Facebook. Come into my free Facebook group, the Mobilitas Movers. Or check me out on Instagram or YouTube, both at Tourshotgolf. Move better, play better.